This is Shelton Re Benjamin. This is Harley Race. This is Mick Foley. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster of Business. This is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Getting, 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 getting. Wrestling fans from around the corner, around the world, welcome to the special installment of Wrestling Insiders. I'm Dan Marotti, joined by the man that's more dangerous in the bedroom than Brock Lesnar is in the UFC, Mr. John Cena Sr. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Also joined by a man that needs no introduction, the man we're going to be speaking about in this video, two-time Hall of Famer in the world of WWE and bodybuilding, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Tony, it's wonderful to have you here in our humble abode. It's well, an honor. An honor and a privilege. Well, I don't know. It's the honor is all man. <laughs> the privilege is all man. There's been a lot of discussion about what's going on online, Tony, with your uh, reality right now. And I think it's a very interesting story about what all wrestlers face at some point when their time in the spotlight in WWE is up. Um, you've had some real life struggles of late. We've had a couple of campaigns to try and get you going that the fans have supported to a point and with, unlike most situations where we try and produce a life story or something like that, you get paid at the end when it's produced and comes out. What we're doing is very interactive, and we've been giving you the cash as you've come down to the studio. Mm -hmm. So that's a real bonus. Right. And not, not only something for you, but uh, other superstars that we want to produce videos like mm -hmm. this for. So we're going to put another campaign together right at WrestleMania. The fans have so many different options. Now, let's talk about these, Johnny. I know you... We're in love with some of these. These are 11 by 17 prints that Tony draws, drew, I should say. They're not the masters, obviously, but they're outstanding. We're going to put video inserts up as we continue I to speak. I hope so. But you got the one with the foot. I got Jillian. Which way she go? Like that. You know me, I'm always turning them upside down. Right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're awful, John. You know, I, I got to show you. Undertaker. I We've have got... to show you the master. Show it. The man from the dark side. This man is unbelievable in what he creates on paper and what he creates with dots. I got to show you another one that I'm really proud of, and I know that somebody else is really proud of it. Um, so proud uh, that I have it. It's hanging in my house. Um, <laughs> he, he just said, Pops, it's got to be safe. And believe me, when people come in, this is a masterpiece in my book. I've never seen anybody capture the likeness so well of John Cena Jr. Unbelievable, and I mean unbelievable. And I'm not saying it because the man is sitting here. I'm telling you that when you see talent, you have to understand talent. This man has talent. Take a look at this group. Take a look at this Legend one. Legend sounds, baby. This is it, all the way down. All the way down. We got my friend over there. How I think is there. <laughs> uh, you know, so we got all kinds of good things going here. We got the tag team champions. The Soul Patrol. The Soul Patrol. And guess who they were? The first African American yeah. WWE and who were tag they? team champions. Who were they? Who they look like? They look, oh, Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson. There you go. And then we have my favorite of all. I'll tell you something. You ever see a self portrait? Not like that. I don't well, think mine would look uh, like that. There's one of Johnny Fabulous. I'm trying to get a do one of me uh -huh. and my son, but this is outstanding. Fans, I'm telling you something. You are missing the boat if you don't get one of these every time you see the man or get him through MWF. These are true, true treasures, and I'm sure that each one that's purchased can be signed by Tony Atlas himself. Mm -hmm. This is unbelievable. I am awestruck by what I have seen. Uh, I've shown that picture to many fans of my son. Um, the Undertaker is just, it blows you away when you Fantas see this especially man's the work. Tattoo. And so anybody that sits back and says to me, well, you know what? It's all about wrestling with Tony Atlas. It's all about wrestling with everybody else. 
Nobody understands that each individual not only has the ability to perform, but has that secondary talent. Yeah, that's this true. man yeah. has a God-given gift. And I'm going to tell you something. I only wish I could do what he does with pen and pencil. Well, let's talk about some of the success we've already had, Johnny. As a result of this campaign, one of the individuals that donated purchased a drawing from Tony, the wrestler of their choice. Because of that, Tony goes home with more money. Tell us a little bit about your story, Tony. Maybe the fans, what really bothered me was a fan on Facebook, and he didn't mean any harm by it, but he said, is this for real? Tony Atlas is a millionaire from all the money he made in the 1980s. Tell folks what it's like to be Tony Atlas in 2015, in a well, very honest way. We're not trying to make it, you know, boo-hoo, poor Tony, but you right, know, it's right, a real-life right. struggle, and you're not looking for a handout. Mm -hmm. you, will, you want the bookings, too. Right, right. We want you down here, so when you go home, you get the mortgage paid off, and you get the bills paid, and you know what? You continue to contribute to this great industry. Right. Well, first of all, I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the WWE, uh, during the time I was there in 2010, uh, 2009, 2008, all the way back to 2006, what they had started is several things that wasn't around during my career, mm -hmm. which in my situation and, uh, and guys like uh, Killer Kowalski, uh, uh, the Russian bear Ivan Koloff, you know, Tommy Wildfire Rich, I, I can name a list and list of a lot of wrestlers from the 70s, the 80s, and all the way up into the 90s that is having a very hard time now that they are not in the limelight anymore. So I'm not the, 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 uh, uh, the last Mohegan. There, mm -hmm. There's a lot of Tony Atlas out there that struggle from month to month, from paycheck to paycheck, that have made a lot of money in the past and, and everything. What Vince McMahon and the WWE has started, uh, and they've probably been going on for quite a while, but I'm not associated with them that much. so. I wouldn't know if it stayed going on, but I do know that they would have financial advisors mm -hmm. to come in to help the wrestlers to invest their money and to teach the wrestlers how to save, save their money. Now, in my day, a wrestler in the 70s that saved his money were called a tightwad. They just say stuff about Nikolai Volkov. They say, and Nikolai is so tight, they squeaks when he walks. <laughs> <laughs> Nikolai got the first nickel that he ever made. And they used to make fun of these guys that would go to the cheap hotel. The guys that, that uh, would not go out and buy a $20 steak. You know, Nikolai and all these guys that was very, very self-conscious with their money, they're all doing wonderful now. Sure. But for a lot of us guys, we live like it was never going to end. You know, right. we bought new cars every year, which was not you know, a bad thing to do because you put about 200 to 250,000 miles on your car each year anyway. So after about two years, you needed a you needed new a car. One. Anyway, but Johnny Weaver, I remember in North Carolina, he would go out and he would buy that uh, LTD, Ford LTD. Yeah, limited editions. And that's right. And, and what he used to make sure that it didn't have electrical wonders, that you had to roll down the wonder, <laughs> and, and, and he did he, he had a cassette player that he put in himself. Mm -hmm. he, and we sell that car. He took that cassette player out and put it in the next car. He didn't want none of the extras. And I asked him one time, he said, well, the more things uh, in, in a car, the more things to go wrong in a car. Right. You know, so he would get the very, very basic. Ole Anderson, I saw him with a brand new pair of cowboy boots on one time. And, and you know, a good pair of cowboy boots, even in my day, mm -hmm. you know, was four or five hundred dollars for a good pair. He sure. had a good pair on. So I said, Holy, you really like spent a little money, did you? Bought some boots. He said, No, somebody gave them to me. <laughs> but right, people, so. and, 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 and when we got some wrestlers that still live old school, like Nick Foliage. I rolled with him in WCW. And the back one of his convertible was gone. When he goes down the road, the top will fly off. And we said, Nick, why do you, you make a good money? Get a, get a new car. He won't do that. Oh. Nick Foley it, it lived the way that a lot of wrestlers used to live. And the guys that, that are like myself, you know, we didn't know. I didn't know much about finance. I didn't know about investment. I never knew that if I made a hundred thousand dollars, that thirty-eight thousand of it was not man's. I didn't know these things, you know. So I figured, oh, I make a hundred thousand dollars. But then come the fifteenth of the month, and you owe Uncle Sam forty thousand of that. So really, a hundred thousand dollars in reality is only sixty thousand. 
you're going to spend at least thirty to thirty-five thousand on the road. Now, fans may not understand that, Tony. Let's make that point. Mm -hmm. All wrestlers in WWE they get flown to the first city of the tour, right. and they get flown home at the end. Right. The wrestler is responsible for their own travel. They have to pay for their own rent a car and drive it. They have to secure their own hotel and pay for it. Right. You're responsible for all your food outside of the catering they have at the live events. Right. So all that's coming out of pocket. It's not provided unless to you. out of that sixty grand you're talking about. Unless you big show or undertake or somewhere that caliber, and then you get bus and and everything is paid for. It. All your expenses take care of. But for the guys that the majority is not of on the, the roster, you're right. right. The, but the majority, of, I, I say at least a good eighty percent of the rest of that pay for their own hotel, pay for their own food pay all their own expenses. I used to travel with Mark Hendry, and, and I, I would go and check into the hotel. <laughs> the hotel would cost me about, when it, they got a rate, because these are like four and five star hotels where right. these guys stay at. Uh, so I would pay approximately about 150 for the hotel. Then I would get me a rental car, and I have to get the rental car for the whole period whole tour, of time. Right. Yeah, yep. the whole tour. So I have a rental car for probably about four days, which would cost me about another 400 bucks. Plus $100 uh, a night for a room. So just that four days would cost me approximately 1000 bucks to make the shows. Wow. For the four days. Right. And so that's even living, when you were in WWE. And that's living cheap because, you know, at these hotels, you're going to get breakfast. It's $25. Sure. <laughs> you, know, they want, you know, they want $15 for two eggs and, 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 and a little bagel there. You know? Yeah. So you yeah. want to eat real good nope. now. It all depends on the city. You're right. But just to emphasize, Tony, you had your run with Mark Henry a few years back. Um, you, you weren't making millions of dollars after no. the taxes and your road expenses were taken out. You had what would be considered a nice middle class life. It wouldn't be considered a lot of money you could live on for the rest of your life no, or put right. a lot into savings. Right. Well, even when people thought, like people said that Tony was making millions, everybody made different. What was your biggest year? About what? 125. And was that the early 80s, mid 80s? Yeah. About one twenty-five. I I I never made one hundred fifty thousand dollars since I've been in business. So that's not millions. It, no, no, I never made millions. But you see, a lot of a lot of guys, they made the the glory, but they didn't get the money. Right. They, because they they didn't know how to. They, they was never in. I was never in a position where I could go and set a table and negotiate a contract, even take it or leave it. To yeah. Me. That that is. Sure. Was, was always my contract. Well, before I started in this business, as you well know, I made 60 bucks a week. So somebody come and say, hey, I'll give you 100 grand a year. <laughs> Which in reality, right in reality, is 60 grand a year, in reality. So, so I would say take home, most of them, I mean, my whole career was between 50 to 60 thousand dollars a year, my, my whole career. Even when me and Rocky was uh, champion, I remember SD Jones testing, y'all the only two guys that got them belts and never made a quarter with them. Our pay did not go up. In fact, our pay went down. Really? They booked us less. We had the title. We had the glory. But if you, you try to find matches of me and Rocky Johnson together, I guarantee you won't find more than five. Really? And the only match anybody ever see of me and Rocky Johnson, if you stop and think about it, was when we won the belt. You lost them. <laughs> what happened in between? They never teamed us up. I was, I was just a baby You know we were then. never teamed up? Really? We don't. We teamed up twice, as just us. Rest of the time it was probably a three man or you know six oh, okay. man. I see what you're saying. They yep. would put like me and Andre and Rocky against you know uh, the Samoans and them, or they would put me and S D Jones and Rocky. I remember one time it was me and one. I was in a match with Tony Guerrero and uh, Rick Montel, and S D was and Rocky was in a single match. But me and Rocky, we only teamed up twice in a year. When we won it and when we lost it. After we won the belt, we never teamed up again. We don't want to give away we don't want to give too much of the story away because this will be our third installment of taping in a little bit. But Johnny, Mick Foley had a great statement not too well, maybe a year or so back, that it's very easy to go from competing in WWE to walking down the aisle unemployed at a retail store and finding your action figure on a shelf and you're not there anymore. The limelight has gone quickly. And the money and the fame goes along quickly. It's very difficult for a lot of guys that never made the quote-unquote big money. It's a I difficult transition. Yeah, but I think Tony hit the nail on the head. You have to remember the time that he was involved right. in what he's saying. Nobody ever thought, and, and it's just like life. You know, the thing about people is we all think we're going to live forever. Mm -hmm. Nothing is forever. No. 
And the problem that these guys were involved in at that time, mm -hmm. that was the era of show, not only in the ring, but out of the ring. Cars, hotels, best food, best mm -hmm. wine, yeah. you know, best cigars. Yeah. And instead You're of somebody... Still living it. Uh, yeah, well, when you're fabulous, <laughs> you can't help it. But yeah. when, when somebody, somebody sits you down and says, Mr. Atlas, uh, Tony, I'd like to talk to you about your finances. Out of that $60,000, you probably have a 10-year run. What mm -hmm. I'd like to do is put $20,000 a year away right. into a fund mm -hmm. so that when you retire in 10 you years, have you time. have close to $2 right, million. Right. Be, oh, you know what I'm trying to Rolls say? Yeah, right. But that wasn't given to them. Yeah. The opportunity was never there. It's a whole different world from where Tony came from to this world. Right. And it's a whole different gen uh, gender of wrestlers, if that's the proper term to right. use. That's right. Because... The young men and women going into the business today all have college backgrounds. They all have some idea right. of how to spend money, That's right. That's they're right. finance wise. That's so right. when it comes time for a contract, they sit here and they go, Well, Mr. Alice, I really would like to work for you, but what's this right here? I pay my own transportation. I buy my own food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. If you yeah, want me that bad, yeah. That's right. then I'm not going to spend $10,000 a year on food. I'll split it, but I'm not going to pay $10,000. Right. So, the predicament that most of these superstars, and he is a superstar and a legend, there's no question in my mind. There was no contract either. Yeah, see? Everything was verbal, a handshake. See? No contract. So yeah. it's a whole different world New that we live in. Yeah. And, and as Tony will uh, alluded to so eloquently when he said, you know, there were no financial advisors there. They simply said to me, here it is. You want it? Take it. If you don't want it, mm -hmm. you're one of those people that can walk down the aisle right now and the Tony Atlas figure's gone off the wall. And for somebody making, look at me, if somebody said to me, you're making $50,000 a year, I'll give you $150,000 a year to come work for me. Well, that's, my eyes only see dollar signs. Sure. Look, I just took money out of my retirement account so I can pay for the, the building I'm trying to buy down in Florida. I just got on a $5,000 withdrawal. The IRS took $1,000 of my money. Right off the bat, yeah. So can you imagine a man like this who's breaking his back every day to, to make the fans have fun, enjoy the day, enjoy the matches, and Uncle Sam says April 15th, and nobody told him this. I'm sorry, Mr. Atlas, but now I want 40% of what you earned. And not only that, another thing that, that, that us wrestlers didn't see coming to was the end of territory. See, the reason a lot of us guys didn't think about saving at that particular time, because... You take like a guy uh, that uh, a lot of guys, I remember wrestling uh, Butcher for Sean, uh, Matt Dahl for Sean, brother. Mm -hmm. And he was 55 years old. But what, what he did, he wrestled, he'd go to Canada, you stay for about four or five years. You go to the WWE, stay four or five years. You go to AWA, you stay four or five years. By the time you visit every territory, hell, 20 you, different seven, places you, to work. You, you were 60, 70 years old. Now, the reason a lot of us guys ran into bad trouble, a lot of us got kicked out in our plan. When Vince them cut me loose for good, I was 35 years old. Wow. I still had a lot to get to offer. Sure. But there was no place for me to go because right. Vince had took everything. If, now, if you're not with the WWE, you, you're never going to see big bucks. Where I could go to AWA and I could make $100,000 a year back in the 70s and 80s. I could go to uh, NWA or Georgia Championship Wrestling or WCW or ECW and make hundred grand a year. So the WWF was not the only place where a wrestler could his career. That's why a lot of the older wrestlers, they, they was able to retire because when they got into their 30s, they, started, they had their fun in their 20s. Once they hit 30, they started preparing for their retirement. But when Vince Jr. took it over, you have to get it within the, your first four or five years. Because after you leave that, there was no place to go. Right. It's like all the guys that just got released, there's no territory for them to go to. And, and the reason that there's no territory, you can't put it all on Vince. He's a businessman. But the wrestlers helped him, help Vince to destroy their future. In a way. Because when, 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 when I wrestled for AWA, and then my first match with the WWE at the time was in Minnesota, was in St. Paul. And I had to go to these areas. Now, now Vern, when I left, I was champion. Mm -hmm. Me and Jim Bronzel never lost a belt. We beat the, 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 the Legion of Doom 
uh, Anima at Hawk uh, in, at the showboat in Las Vegas for the AWA tag title. Mm -hmm. Then I went to, well, you know the rest of the story. I, right. I went to Puerto Rico. Uh, the Brody incident sure. happened. I came back to the uh, uh, AWA, uh, 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 AWA, and Vince called me on the phone, and he said, Tony, I got this African trip to send you to Africa. And he said, talk to Vern. I, I said, well, I got to ask Vern. He said, oh, you don't have to call Vern. I, we, I already talked to Vern. I said, well, but I just feel better myself if I just check out with Vern. I went and talked to Vern. Vern said he knew nothing about it. That should have been a cue to me. Vern said, I know nothing about this. He said, but are you coming back? He said, if you're not coming back, let me know so that I could take the belt off of you and Jim Bronzel. Right. And plus, I had a, a anger at that time going with Bruiser Brody. So I went to Toronto, Canada to do TV for WWF. Well, when I got there, <clears throat> I was, Vince was putting me on his TV. Being a veteran, I should have known this ain't right. I mean, how can I be on the WWF, uh, WWE uh, television and still be working for Vern? That, I've never seen that in this business before. So at the end of the, the taping, Vince Jr. come up to me. He said, well, Tony, it was my understanding. It was my understanding that when you accept the Africa trip, you also accept coming back to work for us. He said, and I said, oh, okay. I said, when we go on the trip? Oh, the Africa trip been canceled. That was told me. There's no Africa, but here's two thousand dollars. So I said, "Well, I better call Vern to just double check." Oh, don't worry about Vern. Vern is okay with it. Everything. Now I seen Vern in two thousand and six at the Hall of Fame. Cause he got inducted the same year I did. First word out of Vern's mouth was, "I was going to build you up." He said, "I was going to put the build you up as a world. You was a promoter's dream. You could you could wrestle. You had a great physique. You know how to do interviews. You got good timing." He said, "Why in the world did you walk out on me without even a phone call?" That's wrestling, unfortunately. But we got to wrap up this segment, yeah. Tony. Again, we have this great campaign going. We want to have you back in April. We want to fill up that wallet again. Fans can help with the online campaign we have. We have these great drawings. You can autograph pictures, belts, whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And again, when you come back, you get to live a little bit better because you have, oh, yeah. it keeps the money train going. And you're also <clears> accepting <throat> bookings. You can still oh, yeah, compete inside yeah, the ring. Yeah, I, I want to work for my money. I want no handouts. I Autograph sessions, yeah. fan fest, TV commercials, personal training with weights, yeah. personal training in a wrestling ring. There's a variety of things that you can do, Tony. Yeah. Uh, what about personal appearances at restaurants on pay-per-view yeah. nights, question and answer sessions? Uh, trivia nights. Yeah. Ton of things you can do with Tony. Check out the information on the screen. We want to keep not only Tony, but all the legends in a good place, Johnny. You know I believe in that with all my heart. They've, I really do. They've given us years of entertainment and enjoyment, and now it's our turn to reach out and help. You're going to love the finished product in this video, Tony. We've put together, our, before we even taped today, over four and a half hours of great content. We're going to keep doing it until we t tell your story to perfection. That's how we want it. Any final thoughts, Tony, before we go, brother? We live, regardless of what all of our so-called circumstances are, we live in a greater country in the history of the world. And I learned from Klondike Bill and a whole lot of people, you are the captain of your own ship. It wasn't that I was not told to save my money. It was not that I was not told uh, that look after yourself. It was not that I was told to put away something for a rainy day. We got that information from other wrestlers that was older than us. Our problem was, my mother used to say, a hard head make a soft behind. Amen. We was hard headed because we always figured that things would always be the same. Right. Like yeah. I tell young people, go to school, get an education. If you don't believe that things going to change, look at life, uh, the, 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 way of, the way of life in 1890 and then go up 30 years to 1920. Nobody was riding horses in 1920. You know, th nobody was doing what they did in, in 30 years later. So for the kids in 2020, you we ain't gonna be doing nothing in 2020 that uh, we, we did in seconds, 1990. Tony. 30 seconds, brother. Yeah, in 1990. Things are going to change. So change with the tides, keep up with the tides, get a good education, and appreciate the fact that we're born in the greatest country in the history of the world, the United States of America. We are number one in, in all saints, all means. 
fans, if you're unfamiliar with Tony's work, check out YouTube. Check out the WWE Network for $9.99 a month. This man is a Hall of Famer. He's a good man. He's still got a lot to contribute. We're going to send him home with money every time he's here to help live. We're going to get him bookings, and it's going to be great. And we're going to try and do this for all the legends as time goes on. Fans, this is a 60-year-old man. 60? 60? No, I'm, I'm, I'm 18. Well, he's 55, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, but see, I, I'm 55, but you know what, Marathi, unlike you, and I'm willing to share. Uh-oh. Tony and I, we got oh. we got plenty. We, we got the money. We right got there. we're gonna take these and we're gonna get we're gonna get changed. We Randy got, Wong is we gonna got, take those and Carlo. Oh, yes, we, <laughs> we have Confederacy money here. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, thank you for joining us. Check out the campaign. Get one of these great rewards. Not only do you have something you're gonna take home for your life collection of wrestling memorabilia, you're gonna help one of the all-time greats. Until we speak again, folks, be well.